Hello everybody and welcome to my snapshot of the game Limbo. Now, normally in my snapshots I record the first time I play through a game. I have already completed this game, but it's it was just such a good game that I have to go back and kind of do one of these snapshot videos for it because I really recommend it and I'm, I want people to kind of see what it is. Alright, so as you can see in the settings here, there's not a whole lot. You got your controls, which are incredibly simple controls brightness and credits and that's kind of all there is to it and that's all the game needs we'll just start right into this game so this is how the game of limbo starts there is no story or setup no cutscenes nothing you're just given this silhouette and I think this is one of the strongest points of limbo is the way that this happens you tap a movement key, you see these eyes appear. And you gain control of this little of your little avatar. This game is atmosphere. That's what it is. I mean there's nothing to the graphics. It's 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 a 2D silhouette against other layers of 2D silhouettes that are in the foreground and background. And with depth of field, it provides this huge kind of scope of game that you see. Then the filtering effect of the black and white with this graininess just creates this surreal look. And that's the hero of this game, is the atmosphere. It just oozes with just this amazing atmosphere. You have a movement left and right, and you have a jump by pushing up. And you have one other control, and that's con the, ac the action key, in which you can kind of grab onto things. Aside from that, that's the entire game is built around these three mechanics. It's kind of like a puzzle, adventure, discovery type game, kind of figuring out what's going on. and the. There is a, a story going on in this game. It's very simple, but it's very cool, um, especially in the way that's presented. And the physics-based puzzles that are all throughout the game are all very challenging at times. But when you figure them out, uh, you do feel very smart. Um, there are no, no levels in this game. No levels whatsoever. The, the game just continues to move forward. There's no loading screens or anything. The game is very short. You can play through the entirety of the game in about two hours, I would say, from start to finish. And it's kind of meant to be played in, through one big sitting. It is a very small game. Um, with the length of the game, there's no real replay value, I'll say, aside from showing your friends and kind of looking at the game again, which it's worth doing because it's such a cool experience the first time through. I I've obviously played it again. And I'm playing it again right now, and I really want to, because um, it's just such an interesting game to look at. But nothing beats your first playthrough the, of the game. And I'm reluctant to go too far and spoil some of the more surprising moments. But it's just, it's a platformer puzzle kind of game, and it's just absolutely brilliant in its execution. The sound design is really masterful. As you can hear, there's these chirps and there's this kind of continuous haze, kind of a wind sound that never really stops. It's just always present. There's always some sort of sound that's present here. Now these are some bear traps. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, the game is also very brutal, as you can see. Uh, thankfully it's just black and white, otherwise there'd be blood everywhere in this game. And you will die. You will die in this game over and over. There is an achievement to get through the game without dying once, and I don't see how that would be possible, because some of these challenges are very hard. For the achievements alone, there is some replay value for the achievements alone, but I don't believe that um, achievements really provide a good reason to replay the game. Um, they're nice, they do give you some some sort of reason to go back and do it, but it, it's not enough for me. I mean, 
someone's not going to come up to me and be like, oh, but there's all these achievements you can get if you play through the game like three or four times. It's like, okay, well, achievements should be um, like a, a, a part of a game, not the reason for a game. And it's not in this game. They're, they're just a piece. They're kind of tacked on. And you can go through and get a lot more achievements, but they're not the reason for getting the game. And uh, they are nice. It is nice to have something in there to give you some reward, but I think there should be more... There should be more incentive to play a game again than just to get some achievement points. I do love achievements. I'm not a hater of achievements, but that's what I think, at least. Oh, the sound design in this game is breathtaking. It really is. It's hard not to play through this. Oh, it's hard not to play through this game and just stop from time to time and just kind of admire the amount of detail they put into the sound effects and the the atmosphere. This game has more atmosphere and feeling to it than most. A-list titles. And it's really ridiculous, you know? That a game with such simple graphical kind of stuff going on could offer such an incredible amount of depth in the, in the world that you're playing in. Which is a limbo, I would assume. You never really told exactly where you are. The title suggests that you perhaps recently have died and are kind of adventuring in this strange limbo world which is in a has a very creepy feel to it and there's some there's some genuinely oh, oh missed that there's some genuinely horrifying moments honestly nothing that's going to make you jump out of your seat or not going to be able to sleep at night like dead space might but uh i mean if you don't like spiders one of the first creepy moments you come across is a spider-esque related moment. So, if you're not into spiders, this game might kind of freak you out a bit. Victory! There's a collectible up there, but I'm not going to go get that. I already got it before. The animation is very nice. It's hard to compare the graphics of this game with other games because there's, like, nothing to it, you know? It's just black and gray. But the aesthetics of it is very impressive. Like I said, it's a very short game. You can play through it in one sitting, which is what it's meant... I believe it's meant to be played through in one setting. A trap up there. And it's definitely worth purchasing. If this game was sold for $30, I would still recommend getting it. And it's cheaper than that. I'm sure you can get it cheaper than that on Steam. I forget exactly. I bought it for, I think, uh, uh, $15. It's probably cheaper than that now. Uh, I don't regret a cent of that because this game is amazing. Oh. <laughs> Once again, the sound design is just so well thought out. I'm reluctant to even talk during certain moments of this because you'll miss some of these cool sound cues. Just the atmospheric drone of being near the spider, for instance. Oh! Whew. Whoa, 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 whoa. That was close. Come on, JT. Yeah, get out of here. Yeesh. Creepy.
Alright guys, well, the thing of this game is there's a lot of moments like the ones you just experienced that really have some kind of cool surprise and mystery to them. So I don't want to spoil them, so this is going to be a particularly short episode because I'm not going to go any further in this particular episode of Snapshot. But I can't stress enough how much I enjoy this game. I think it's one of the best indie games you can get right now. Um, I know it's been out for a while, and you can get it, I believe you can get it on PSN, and uh, I'm not sure about Xbox Live. I haven't checked there, but it could could very well be available there as well. And it is, without a doubt, one of my favorite indie games I've ever played. It is excellent. Um, I really suggest picking it up and playing through it, no matter what the price you may pay for it. Um, it's worth playing through at least once just for the experience of it. Um, it's great so I give this my most the biggest stamp of approval I possibly could limbo is excellent in every single regard I can't really nitpick at anything I can't really think of anything to really say that's bad about this game aside from the fact that there's not a whole lot of replayability there's a few achievements you can replay for and just the overall experience of, of playing it again which is you know was enough for me but for most people there's not going to be enough reason to play through this several times and the price point compared to the fact that you can't really play through it a lot and mixed in with the fact that the game's fairly short at maybe two hours long total some people might not like that i don't care because i would rather have a two hour long game that leaves an impression like this than play a 40 hour long game that i forget about in a few months because it just wasn't that great of an experience. So once again, Limbo is absolutely stellar. You should pick it up and get it right now. It is excellent, and one of my favorite indie games of all time. This is Mr. JT Decker signing off from this episode of Snapshot, and I'll see you guys all later.